Hello and welcome to another weekly financial update from RTS Financial Planning. As always, this is where we go through some of the stories that have happened in the world of finance over the last week and also discuss some of the subjects that our investment committee are looking at as part of our RTS investment strategy, which is available to all of our clients. So this week, world stock markets didn't have a great week and most of them ended with negative results. And this was mainly because of the US stimulus package. So what's the US stimulus package? Well, it's a package of money, basically, that the US government needs to agree and release into the US economy. Now, we're talking about $2 trillion here. Um, there's some haggling over the amount, but it's around that figure. And this basically covers direct payments to US citizens, particularly those that are unemployed, loans for businesses, and also aid for airlines, amongst other things. And investors are hoping that this level of money being pumped into the US economy will get the US economy going, and as it's the world's biggest economy, this will have a knock-on effect for other countries around the world. Sticking with the US, and many US companies have been reporting their latest quarterly earnings. The US is different to the UK in that public companies in the US need to report every quarter, whereas in the UK it's every half year. Many business leaders in the US are annoyed about this level of reporting as they feel it focuses too much on the short term rather than the long term. Netflix one of the biggest companies in the US, announced disappointing results. Earnings were below expectations, and whilst they added around 2.2 million new subscribers, this was below the 2.5 million they promised, and way below the 3.5 million that analysts expected. Netflix stock suffered a drop of around 6% on the news. There's a key investing lesson here. When it comes to growth companies like Netflix, Investors will usually buy into a company and therefore raise its share price on the expectation of greater future profits and revenue. If the company then misses these targets when releasing results, investors will usually get out quick and there'll be a sharp sell-off. The same can also be true if a company releases really good sets of results. There's a saying in investing that goes, buy the rumour, sell the news. And what this is basically means is that Investors will be betting on a company to achieve a certain set of results. That's why the share price rises before the results are ever announced. When the results are announced, unless there's a really good prediction of further future growth, investors will tend to bank their profit and move on to the next company. There was more good news coming out of China this week, as the economy grew 5% last quarter when compared to the same time last year, which means that China has now recovered all of its losses through lockdown. And as mentioned previously, China is likely to be the only major world economy to grow this year. So why has it been so successful? Well, there's mainly two reasons for this. Firstly, China was just so much better prepared for the latest coronavirus outbreak. Back in 2003, it experienced the SARS outbreak, and they just have so much more better systems to be able to cope with pandemics. Things like better testing capacity, tighter lockdown restrictions, and rightly or wrongly, the super surveillance of their population, meaning they can monitor people easier and control the self-isolation process better. The other reason is the type of economy that China has. It's much more focused on industrial output when compared to the US and Europe. In the US and Europe, their economies are much more focused on the services sector, and this is the sector that's been most badly impacted by coronavirus. And this is why when it comes to investing, and you're looking at different countries to invest in, you need to look at what makes their economy, what sort of sectors are most prevalent in their economy, and what are the future projections for these sectors. Better still, when it comes to investing and controlling your risk, it's better to diversify across a range of countries, a range of sectors, and a range of individual companies, rather than having all your eggs in one basket. So that wraps up another weekly update. I hope you found it useful as always. Please comment with any feedback you've got and any stories that you found interesting. As always, please subscribe to the channel as we've got a number of videos in the pipeline and different subjects. And also, we do a weekly blog with a range of articles um, held on our website, which cover a range of different subjects on investing, retirement, pensions, you name it. There's over 300 articles now on the website. You can search and find pretty much anything you want relating to finance. So please tell your friends about us. Until next time, take care.